Uh, we've got our next guest sat in the cockpit here. Chris, are you there? Hello, who can you hear me? Yeah, no pro There he is. Okay. I see you've come I see you've come prepared. Is this your new quarantine outfit? Yes, red red or tin so I've got a colour on my head. That will stop it. That will stop it, as well. So just just a nice little joke there. Good evening. Hello, man. Um, you're in the same. We, we, I thought I'd have a chat with you because um, since we went away to Europe, it was all systems go for some really groovy stuff, and then we've cancelled D-Day, and like the next day or even the same day, you had to cancel Bathurst. It feels shit, yeah. It's a terrible, terrible feeling, and, and they put so much effort into it. They they got through the Second World War. Um, this year they got through African horse sickness, they got through foot and mouth disease, they got everything else and then Corona hit them and the rumours started spreading that the show would be cancelled. Um, the president of the society said the show will go on, one of those old veneers of the past year. And that was on the Saturday, that was in a local newspaper saying that the rumours are false, the show will go on. And yes, they told otherwise and on the Sunday we had President Ramaphosa saying Every show should be shut down, so they had no alternative. Yeah, um, when you, you probably saw our live feed from Barcelona last week, and we were at the Dabadu, and you know, uh, Spanabis was getting a hell of a slagging for cancelling at the last minute, but it made a difference. We, we heard that it's possible that it made a difference in being insured for it or not, because it did, it, 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 it hit hard in Spain, and um, I reckon uh, you heard Jair's comments about our president from a, a, a Hollander, you know. He, he was very moved by the president's speech. You obviously watched it as well. It, um, it's, it, it's gobsmacking to most people because it's come from nowhere. It's like Corona's fucking miles away. It's in Europe, but now he's taken such drastic steps to, to kill it. Have, have you got any sense of it down there? Because in the Eastern Cape, on all of these maps... There isn't even a little dot anywhere around you, is it? It's like business as usual for you, yeah? As, it's, as you know, I spend a lot of time online and I'm on full steam ahead, shutting down everything myself personally. I'm keeping dead quiet about it because there was an old um, Salute scout that saw me buying a whole bunch of um, puck and supplies at 7 o'clock on Monday morning before I thought everyone was going to go crazy. He made a joke about it, but everyone is totally relaxed, totally, totally relaxed. I mean, I was in Oxford earlier today, the streets are quieter, um, the likes of pick and pay, the AC sanitizing hands, but everything is actually quite relaxed. The pubs are quite difficult that they have to close, but they're all doing the responsible thing. But personally, seeing what's happening in, in Spain, Italy, and, and many other countries, I think we're still not taking it as serious as it should be. I can I can feel the vibe a bit more online since the president did speak. It's like nobody can ever remember any South African president doing that shit before. So uh, the, the memes have stopped a bit. Um, from my sort of side of the English line of things, I get a lot of stuff from the UK. It's definitely quietened down there with the memes. It's getting quite hectic in London. I spoke to my sister today and she has been working for the same boss for nearly 40 fucking years. And he says, if you go home, you don't get paid. Yeah, yeah, no, it's That's ridiculous. Scary Unacceptable, and that shouldn't actually be illegal. If there's been a national disaster declared, as it has, I mean, yeah. never have we seen legislation be affected so fucking fast, ever. Did you, um, so, uh, uh, Chris, did you hear Tony's remarks about pushing through emergency legislation? What do you think of that? I didn't actually hear that. So I was running around. I was listening to Tony for a bit, but I did miss that. Okay, well, I, I just asked him an off-the-cuff question of, um, is there a silver lining to anything? And obviously we all know that uh, whatever you think about cannabis, CBD and THC, it does lift the human condition. Whether you hate it or not, whether you despise the fact, it does people good. So what about pushing through legislation to farm the fuck out of it just for seed to start with so we can feed people? I think we, uh, personally, I think a bit um, 
a little bit behind on that, but definitely believe that um, whether it's CBD, whether it's hemp seed, whether it's THC, it's definitely the moon booster, and that's what everyone, every single person needs right now. So light up your home ground, smoke the joint, don't fuck the past, and, and look after yourself. And what, what condition, what are you doing with yourself now? Are you taking lockdown seriously? We've got a bit of a scale on the show now. I am literally quarantining with Myrtle and there's nobody coming within fucking five meters. We've had people in the same room from a distance, but we're taking absolutely no chances because the way we see it from how it's operated in, in, um, uh, in Spain and in Holland is if it's like direct contact with a human who coughs or splutters or something, there's a high chance. But if it's like at an ATM or at a finger pad or at a card machine or something, it's still a slim chance that it will live long enough. And then it's the touching your face bit and everything like that. We're completely used to it. But how many times do you touch your face a day, Joe? Joe, Chris. Joe. No, me, oh, way too many times. I'm, I'm realizing it now, like being forced to think about it, way too many times. So I've got a, I've been, um, I've kind of transferred most of Dhaka Couple's um, conversation to Twitter now. And I am, I'm watching a thread from a South African lady, a black South African woman in her early 30s. And she's been in the, the zone in, in, um, in China for seven weeks. And she's been locked down for seven weeks now. And she writes this amazing thread of a blog on Twitter about how they've become used to this new way of life. And um, they do wipe down everything, but she says the only reason she touches, uh, she puts a mask on is to stop her from touching her goddamn face. Yeah. That's terrible, yeah. I mean, it's, it's exactly that I realized how much you touch your face. Yeah. Have you ever, have either of you worn a mask yet? No. I, I believe the mask is going to be something that's yeah, it's even worse to have because if you're going to touch the mask ever just to move it and then you you just so happen to touch something that had this germ on it or this virus, you're going to put onto the mask. The mask is not going to help you anyway, so it, it's not, it doesn't matter about the mask. The mask is just going to stop. If someone's coughing in your face, it's still going to go into your eyes or into your nose. The one into your nose when your mouth is covered, it'll go into your eyes. If it, even one drop that hits your mucous membrane, that means that you are, it is able to then latch on and get what it's going to. So pretty much, you can't really um, get much out of the mask except to be going to people that are being infected, I'd say. What about? Washing your hands and make sure you like rinse your face out with um, bicarbonate of soda and oh. every morning and every evening, just give yourself a good face wash with that in the face. It's a good way to like kill anything that you might have come into contact with in the day, just just a good clean up anyway. Change the pH of your skin and your membranes that are around there, it works out there. Chris, is it hitting home to a small town like Bathurst that it could be coming their way? Is it just so remote that it just hasn't hit home properly yet? No, no, it definitely hasn't hit home. I mean, it was just last week. That when it really hit home for me was uh, your and Myrtle's streaming video walking through the streets of Barcelona speaking about like being in a movie in a apocalypse. And I watched a few um, online streams from BBC or CNN, things like that, and it really started hitting home. But funny enough, the week before, the guy had, had just arrived back from China and was sitting at the local village green, puffing and passing joints. I know it was as wet as anything. They passed the joints to me. I said, no thanks. I never really share joints anyway. Um, and I don't think it's at home at all here yet. I don't think it's, it's happened yet. And, and that's, I think I'm just trying to be a step ahead. And we are doing isolation here. Um, we have spoken to the foreman, we have spoken to the residents and it's not around us and we cancelled anyone coming down. We don't want anyone here or near us for the next, for the foreseeable future. Did you, did you read the, um, the government gazette about the fine print of how they're going to enact the, the state of emergency thing? And in, you, you showed us it, Dan, in paragraph 8 they had this whole lockdown on alcohol, specifically booze. Not tobacco or anything else, just booze from 
a specific time to a specific time. There must be tons of shabines and stuff round your way. They must all be yeah. sickling now. Well, we, we spoke, I was at the ploughman today, we went, we bought all the booze for the ploughman today and they've updated their opening phone to from the government to death. And I think at about 11 o'clock this morning, um, they all had a meeting regarding the, the opening and closing phone. Um, they're really going to battle this business, but they adhere to the laws and, and the etc. And I think, I still think it's all needed. I mean, what's the point of closing the pub at, at 1 o'clock when it's not 10 people in it? It's, I know it's meant, I think it's meant more for the taverns, but I can guarantee you the taverns will have an open door policy or back door policy. I mean, I can't really go into more details, but I don't think they can take it as serious. Um, yeah. Uh... The reap the law enforcement to enforce those, those rules. What's your take on that, Dan? Why do you reckon they zoned in on booze? Uh, I think it's just because we've got such a big drinking culture. So basically, there's a lot of a lot of gathering, and it's just basically inbred into us. We all meet around the pub, or around a bottle store, or around a shabin, or around you know wherever it is. It's going to be with booze. So I think in that in that uh, notice, they did say something about. They will be enforcing the closing of the bottle stores and they will be closing the enforcing of restaurants, clubs, bars, all those kind of venues where it's more than 100 people, which essentially makes a business close. They can't operate with anything less than that unless it is really small and they happen to do that, but still. But yeah, they're going to go for the booze. That's where everyone gathers. It's a strategic plan, I think. I mean, if there was a lot of cannabis clubs, just like Amsterdam, they would close us. They would say, sorry, guys, you guys can't also be open. And we would all adhere to it because we also understand them, you know? And there's always going to be that backdoor sale, like Chris says. I mean, Shabin is a, is a Shabin. That's the that is what a Shabin is. It's a backdoor sale of booze. So it's rather let, let someone go and pick it up as a takeaway, you know. Like, you know, said, now they've opened it up for people to pick up and go, I think it is. But, yeah, uh, booze is because it's the, everyone does it. It's the most common thing that the whole country is going to most likely get caught up with the virus with everyone else. Right, I think you're probably right. Like... Who's the addict now? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing. But the smokers, eh? So I think apart from, um, I'll put this one to you, Chris, apart from like certain religious groups and their thoughts about alcohol and their, non, and their abstinence of alcohol, what about the, um, the cannabis culture of South Africa or anywhere are the least likely drinkers of any subculture in the country? We are the least drinkers in society, generally speaking. Stoners have a drink, but they don't go out on a mission for it, generally speaking. For me, in my group, they don't drink. They, we all have a drink. Look, I've had two beers tonight, but um, uh, generally speaking, we don't make a, an issue of it. So what if we are the least affected by such a lockdown? What do you reckon, Chris? I definitely think so. I think we're going to see a lot of stoners. We might be the... the Majority, and it's all finishes up and who knows. Oh, there's a fuck, there's an interesting thing. Oh, Jesus, yeah. From from Stadivus or from anything that's happened in Spain, seeing as it was like the epicenter of all stoners for during the like basically the peak of this whole thing, to see if any of them report themselves as actually contracting this disease, this virus from being literally in the epicenter. I mean, you guys have been there. You guys have sort of like testament to show that if you just maintain hygiene, clean yourself, make sure you just keep your head on, head about yourself, you'll make it out of there. I mean, you guys were in the center of it, and you're back home. So far, you guys are on showing symptoms. You know, obviously, you'll get tested if you need to, but uh, it's not it's not to say that you get it as like Ebola. I'm, I'm more scared of Ebola. Ebola, I can tell you that right now. That terrifies me. Not this.